Look at that. Lovely. Lovely sweat coming up off that right hand spot there. Just fading away now, but it's cutting across the pond right there. Boom. Alright. About to turn it off, that's why it's dead shaky. <sighs> Come on, the carps. I've got to stay a couple more nights. <laughs> okay, so turns out I can charge um, this camera off my Ridge Monkey. Didn't know that. But yeah, I can. Uh, that's a good point, too. A lot of people always ask me what this camera is. One second. It's a Sony FDR AX53 Handycam. Um, I am just slowly again prepping. Everything's going on. What I caught on pretty much. Yeah, dumbbell. Down to what well, back on the sinkers. The craze have come back alive again. A little bit of strip back there, so it's got that turn. XL sinker there. And then, yeah, I'm not going to put any putty on that. And yeah, boom. Same again. I've left this one without a rig on at the minute because I want to just double check the clip when it's a bit flatter just because um, I noticed that I had to take a small step back last night to get the perfect drop. Um, and when I led it up, it was in the wind. Obviously, you've got that bow in your line in the wind, and then you, so you have to adjust your clips. A good tip for people that don't know about that, yeah. So if you start a session and it's flat calm and you're fishing, let's say for instance, 20 wraps, uh, and then all of a sudden a big crosswind comes on, that spot isn't 20 wraps anymore. Um, you need to adjust that. Um, hopefully a lot of people know that. If you don't, you sat there like, oh, <laughs> that bow, it's got to go somewhere and it's in your wraps. It's as simple as that. Yeah, I'm going to put two rods tight over the rod that I caught the brother on. Um, and then one rod on the one that I caught the little the little skerret on because um, obviously he wouldn't have been on his own and I did hear a big fish short right I need to really fill you in because I was trying to save battery in case it did happen so yeah uh, add that first little skerret um, a skerret I shouldn't call it that um, fish is a fish especially for me uh, and that thing definitely knocks around with some of them bigger ones so um, I'll take them all and um, so yeah add that one then, um, yeah, I've hear, hearing a few out here, boom, just breaking surface, breaking surface, because it's quite calm, you can hear them a lot better. As if, if had there been a little wind on, I wouldn't have heard many of them. Um, but then one boomed out 20 yards in front of me, I'm like, bloody hell. You know, you'd think choddy short here would be a great tactic, and if I fished here all year round, I would definitely play around with choddies a lot more, because they're moving carp, throwing stick and choddies, something like Jim Shelley, I'd probably slay these. However, with that said, only takes a cray to grab one of them chods and it's in the weed and done. So, <laughs> you know, the, the, you know, you really gotta, you'd probably be flicking them out here, there and everywhere. Would that disturb the fish? So, at the minute, because I'm, you know, I haven't got loads of time to be playing around. I haven't got a full season ahead of me. I need to fish the confident way that I fish the most confident on spots where I'm seeing the fish, on the rigs that I know really work. All that, everything I've learned over the last three weeks is all piled into this session feel like I found a little ideal, caught the brother about, what was it, about two o'clock or something, literally just came straight in, didn't have, it just shot into the weed at the back of the spot, popped it up, wound it in, carried it to the left, I'm in dead shallow water here, popped it in, no drama whatsoever, got a boy here short to my left, got one further out there, got one round to the right, no drama, um, so yeah, that's that, gonna just literally replicate everything, Pick up on everything. I'm taking off the any putties. I did have some putties up my uh, leadless lead core. Um, it's not called. What's it called? How can it be called lead core if it's lead free leader? Yeah, can't be called a lead core if it's got no lead core. Uh, lead free leader. I did have some putties just pinned up there because I weren't getting any tr cray trouble last night. Boom! They've just come alive, just like the carp have. Or you know, so whether it's uh, you know moon phase related by the crays weren't messing around or what, I don't know. But um, yeah, it's all guns blazing. I'm absolutely pumped, buzzing. I'm sure you can imagine. You know, I know of a lot of it. You know, at least of a three, maybe even four captures of the croc with the brother. Um, so there's a 
good chance that she was out there. Sorry, that's what it was. So I've heard that one boom out. I've had that bite, got the rod back out, and 20, 30 minutes later, boom, same boom out. Definitely big. It's only one of a few fish. It could have been, and um, it, hopefully it was the croc, and it boomed out after the bite as well, and it boomed out f about 4 o'clock this morning. Same fish. You can just tell the sound. Do, 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 shot like that. Then I heard it a bit further over to the right. Might have been on the old bait from yesterday. Who knows? Um, and then, yeah, that was it. So... Hopefully it got three months there, got three months over there maybe in my bait. It's gone in there, it's gonna come back. I've got two rigs sat waiting for it. And it's game on. The moon's right, like it's new moon tonight. The conditions don't look like they're changing any drastically. I could do without flat calm, they definitely like that. It seems like they don't like the rain like I've already said and they don't really like the wind by the looks of it. Or maybe I'll just hear and see more because it's flat. Rings obviously on flat water's a lot easier. Yeah, I'm just sitting through a day of this again. You know, your windows, I know I keep going on about it, but you know, I've been here, I've been here. Um, so that was me sixth night last night. I'm pulling out all the stops, obviously I'm ringing. I've been on the phone crazy to people. Um, let me just get this stove on because I'm chewing on for a lot longer than I was thinking I was going over there. Um, yeah, I've been on the phone, sorting things out, for think food, for work, for everything like, um, and yeah, I've got to pull out the stocks when these things are happening. You know, some people might think, well, yeah, he's been there ages and all that. But if you can make it happen, you know, you're putting in that much time and effort. If you can move things around and that's what you want to do, you're going to do it. You know, I personally, I'm doing it. And um, I'm sure I'm going to have a sort of straight week at work, you know, working long our, our shifts after, after pulling these extra couple of nights. Because Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are generally my, my days when I have to do a lot. So, yeah, what I was getting to is, I've done six nights, but hardly any rod hours, not fishing in the days, I'm seeing the bigging in the bay, seeing them in the out of bounds, there's nothing telling me to be out and have rods out there, if there was fish out there, maybe it's worth giving them a free month, if I was seeing fish showing, don't get me wrong, we'd be game on, but I know where they are, they're there again today, you know, it makes sense to bring them in, refreshing your rigs, you know, craze and all that mental, you know, you want them just going out. They come out of there at six, seven o'clock in the evening, just after dark at the minute. Um, and then they're, they're off by three, four. So hours wise, rod hours, I haven't done a lot, which is why these longer sessions of working them out. And that, cause if I was just doing one or two nights a week, it'd take me a lot longer to work them out. By the time I get back the next week, it's a different conditions, different like, you know what I mean? I've got to, if I can put a big stint of time together like this, I've got a better chance I ran the perfect timing of these moons and them clearly coming active and, you know, all the conditions are very steady, steady, same, same. We had that crazy bit of rain and all that the other day, but often that the wind's been similar, that nothing's really changing. So hopefully they don't change their habits, but they could do any day. Right, back mix switch yours of chops and halves and whole ones a little bit of a flake of corn not too heavy put a bit of weight on it just water just switch to eat because i've got a bit of this uh, crosswind coming in now uh, so just adds that little bit of weight sends it a bit more direct but also when you kiss the clip you hit it nice and hard and it straightens that that bow out nice and straight so you're getting that direct contact to the spot so yeah that's it, um, we've got a bit of a gap in the swimmers, I think they're on lunch. So no swimmers out in the pond, which you've got a spot here, and a spot here, somewhere here. Um, and yeah, they're not in the swimmers path anyway, but obviously I don't want to be throwing spawns around swimmers for obvious reasons. Um, so yeah, I'm going to slip a little bit of bait out, just double check the clips and all that while there's nothing happening. Just make sure everything's absolutely perfect, double and double check again. Just run out, you know, I'm going to, I've got... Like I said, I've got a rig, I've got one of the, the longer spot rods um, with no rig on, so I'm just going to chuck that, make sure it's got the right distance on it. Always I like to do that if I can. It's all good finding it with your leading rod, but the, the braids are different. Your fine spot braid will cut through the wind a little bit better than your thick, heavy sinking braid, especially when it's got water on it, so you get a bit more of a bigger bow, so you might just have to adjust slightly. Uh, Loads of tactical stuff in this one, isn't they? Hey, I'm getting right into it. Hey, had a second wind. We survive, they might say. Well, yeah, want to get the bombs in now so I can just literally just flick the rigs out later. Lovely times. 
as Nick Elliott would say, professional carpiste. <laughs> what a boy he is. Yes. Buzzing. Buzzing. All right, done. You can see these. Let's put these on. And just make that out there. Let's come up sat here. Oh, in the out bounds. Standard. Exactly where I want them. So I get my rod sorted and then come out to play. I'm hoping you can see these now. Yeah, you can see them. Different angle. Big carp. Oh, I am proper lagging. I'll do a look. Look all right, but you know, when your eyes are just burning, your body's like, oh, need these swimmers to go away now and so I can get these rods out. I've just nailed a full can of Red Bull in one sweep to try and perk me up for a minute. There's another swimmer still out here. There's one there. Uh, Shot. Oh, so hard work. I'm back at the other archive and it's playing. It's been, it's been hard work. This has. It's hard to. I hope it sort of comes across in the videos. You know, I'm not just sort of down here, but nice simple fishing. It's not easy. This. This is right up there with you. You know what? For, from my point of view, with your your raised breeze in the day and your your burr fields and them sort of wakes, this is right up there. This is no easy feet which is why i'm here which is why i love it you know all them hard things are what attract me to it as well as the carp itself but it's where it lives you know how hard and excessive inaccessible places are and all this stuff that's going on now my limited time and then the windows of opportunity the craze the tension the, you know all them things that make it such an hard graph because if it was easy everyone would be down here getting a taste of the crock wouldn't they um but it just doesn't come out every day of the week um, which is why I'm here but I'm basically just waffling on because I'm knackered <sighs> come on I had to stay if you knew how like the people that are watching this that know this fish will be like you had to stay you know I did well to stay that extra night yesterday and now tonight I've got to stay I've got to stay don't know how like like Oh, it's just got my grip of me. But that 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 brother is so what's the word for it that I'm looking for? It's it's so relevant, is that no? It's just it's just it comes out with that car. I know that crock was out there. I know it. Even if it wasn't, in here it was. And that is what is gonna ultimately 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 um hopefully make me catch it and wanna talk it in the net if I have to. Ugh quarter to five now, usually about five o'clock by this time. Waiting for a speedboat to come whipping round that corner, do a lap of honour, say that there's no one in the water, and the job is a good one. So we want to see speedboat, not another swimmer. Oh no! Who wants to go out for a swim at this time of day? Oh, he's behind that buddy. <laughs> Behind the twig, twiggy lad. There he is. There, what? See him? Blurred out. Oh, boy, red bobbing. Urgh. Come on, mate. Go home. Missing kids are at home. I'm feeding. <sighs> Probably got a butler. Anyone that lives around here goes swimming all day. <sighs> Ain't short of a quid or two. That's for sure. Beautiful area, by the way. Sat there. Waiting to go. This is it. It's game on. 
lap of honours coming. Right, it's go time. Oh, I've been waiting for this. Rigs out, digs out. Whatever that means. Oh, wow. <clears throat> Lovely times. Come on now, Scott. Game face. Game on, I need some sleep. <sighs> the rods are set. I'm sure you can tell that I'm super confident, super confident. It is definitely all down to the fish now. Everything is aligning, it's down to them. So let's see what the night and the new moon brings. I don't even know if you can see me. It's not even dark. Well, it's just gone dark. This is a sick cop. Oh, let me turn this off. Oh, oh my God. Oh, come to daddy. I got filming this in the snag. And I said it was going in my net. And it's gone in my net. Oh my days. What a girl. Sick. Oh my days. Oh, you beautiful girl. You will go in my net. We got me. Same. 38, 38. Zero, did it? Yeah. 37. 37. 37. 37. 37. 37. 37. 37. 37. 37. 37. 37. 37. 37. 37. 37. 37. 37. I ain't gonna lie. Nice. Oh, it's like I can't even think what it's done though. Must have swapped up the shelf or something. Must have done. You know what I mean? It's like gone out there, you know. It should be alright. Winter's coming. Oh, good girl. Sorry, girl. I'm sticking a retainer over there. Let's have a look at her before she goes. <sighs> How's she looking, lad? Sick. <laughs> right. Did a video of this one in the snags. And I said she will go in my net. Head round to me a touch. <laughs> How was that? That's the one. Who's in my mat in the background? <laughs> yeah. Right, go on, yeah. Sick cart that was. I was a bit gutted about that tail, but um, yeah, me and Milo had a proper look at it, and yeah, there's definitely a bit of a chunk missing out of it. And um, there's a couple of marks on the left flank. When I first got it on the mat, obviously it looked fresh, and I thought, now have I done that? But it literally just came in, so it definitely weren't anything to do with me, it just nodded its head all the way, and didn't really have much of a scrap with it, so um, yeah, just obviously. The otters have been on, so it's just at least it's alive, you know. Does your head in to see him like that. Um, which he took that little bit of uh, the flat, well, it sort of came off it, it was hanging off. Looked a lot better, a bit gutted about it, but what can you do? These otters are bad. Um, like I say, at least it's alive. Um, it hasn't, hasn't um, got it. But 
Yeah, it was in here a couple of nights ago, as you know, I've been keeping you up to date on that. Spoke to one of the lads down there earlier on, and he reckons he might have heard it in that corner last night, so it could be as, as early as that. A bit strange how it's feeding now. I mean, I always thought they went to sort of bed, I did, and that, but definitely, it's telltale water sign, isn't it? Um, that bottom lobe, and obviously marks down that left flank, so. Oh, but anyway, let's take the positives. Another one off the list, like I literally had two fish that I wanted to catch. Um, you know, I feel like I don't want to smile, but I've got to, man. You know, I caught it, um, patch 37.4. What a carp! It was one that I've, honestly, like this, this weight's proper got me now, like really got me. Um, and yeah, it's this weight saved me. I won't go into too much detail, man, but. Like, I proper got my fishing head back on. Anyone that knows and sort of maybe follows me as well will know that I haven't done much fishing with launching Think Food and a host of all other stuff that I won't even get into going on. Um, yeah, I've come here. I'm 25 days sober now, doing Stoptober. I'm actually going for 50 days um, all the way to the 21st of November, which is the first World Cup game. Um, so, yeah, did that, doing that. And it's because of this lake, you know. Um, mega, mega buzzing with that fish. When I first walked on this lake, I saw that fish in the snags. I saw it the other week with that little film, like I've already said. I said you're going in my net. It's one that I've always looked at. Um, believe it or not, I was actually sending screenshots of it this morning to say, like, having this, want this, you know. Um, and there it is in the net, buzzing. Uh, I haven't put that rod back out, still got that one on the spot, the one that went down sweet and I was like, this is the croc rod, that one's still out there, so what I've done is that spot that I didn't fish um, tonight, obviously I was fishing three different spots last night, um, the one that I didn't um, put a rod on, I've wrapped it up and put it out there, obviously I haven't put any bait on it but it had bait on it yesterday, so never know, it's better out there fishing because I ain't squeezing it back on that spot, um, so yeah, we still got another rod in the water. I'm knackered, I'm beat. I've got a feeling that hopefully that other rod's gonna go off and uh, we'll get another chance, but I'm more than happy to catch a fish out of here in the season is good enough, so to catch, what, I'm on three now, including the little scarret. Um, you know, what a session, sick. I feel like I'm gonna cry or something, I'm just knackered. I'm not gonna cry, I'm just knackered. Um, I haven't got that enthusiasm now, it's all just, I had a big mad adrenaline rush and then it's just, I've just come down and I'm just chilling now, I've had a brew. Had a little chat with um, with Miles and one of the, one of the uh, and Dan and that on the phone, just talking about that tail more than anything, and just like, you know, it's just part and parcel, isn't it? Um, but yeah, anyway, hopefully I'm going to see you tonight with a big crocodile, or at least another carp, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? The other brother. Um, that's something, but yeah, peace out. Thank you, lad. I've been up about probably since five. What is it now? It's 20 past six. So about another hour or so of fishing before it's white and old Bouty comes out. Um, all went a little bit strangely quiet, really. Although I did sleep very well, it's broken as we I think I woke up at light one and then <sighs> three. And yeah, woke up at five and just stayed up. But I have been getting a couple of liners, whether it be liners or cray, but I feel like they were definitely liners because the wind picked right up and then every now and then it did, 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 you know, classic liner, but also could be cray walking over the lines and that because they have come back to life, as I said earlier. Um, what was it going with? Where was it going with that? I can't remember, I was just after someone to talk to really, I'm getting a bit lonely, you know. It's been um, seven nights that is a bit lonely out here on my own. I mentioned how good looking you are. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, the, um, yeah, went a bit quiet, got a couple of liners, it's, you know, the thing is, is, it's made me a little bit, oh, is that rod fishing, you know. Of the craze bad it or is it you know it was definitely went down that one because that was the one I was most confident in but it's definitely fishing but you know the longer time goes on I had that bite real early like you just think 
but yeah, I thought it was going to get another bite. However, you have to relay back in your mind like this. This ain't. Hey, up. Off. This ain't. Um, this ain't an easy pond where you're just getting bite after bite after bite. But it just feels so right after having a couple of bites, conditions banging. But I haven't really heard anything since yesterday evening. Like I heard a couple. Um, I know Miles was down and we were chatting and that, but after that he went and lay there for an hour, so silent, nothing, so, who knows, they just don't like the wind, they don't like showing in it anyway, I know that much, and they don't like the rain, not in a minute anyway, they might do it another time here, but they definitely ain't liking it in a minute, anyway, I'll stop waffling, hopefully something's going to happen right now, oh, in a bit. Burning out now. Last night, it's game on and game over tonight. Confidence. Um, I've literally re-wedded the spot, rebaited them as well. I had a massive window of here, zero swimmers. Put that on silent. Um, yeah, zero swimmers for ages. Um, so yeah, I even clipped the rods up and chucked them and just readjusted the clip slightly because uh, like I was saying yesterday, was it yesterday? God knows I've been here. It's going to be eight nights tonight. <laughs> um, yeah, um, yeah. readjusted the clips to suit the wind and then should it die later on, I'll do the same again. Um, yeah, so everything's sweet. Did f f up a little bit, when I, not when I brought the rods, so when I brought that last, so obviously I had two rods on the banker spot, didn't I, and one on one where I had the little skerret off. Um, that's been the banker spot there, I had two rods and it had that bite last night, patch and then uh, left that one remaining rod, thought, oh, we're sweet, it's fishing, which it was, that was the banker rod, and then when I wound it in, it got a little skid, and then just got a little bit, sort of, grating milfoil, basically, milfoil feels a bit great, it almost feels like you're dragging over gravel, um, when, you, when you pull through it, it's like, like that, because it's just snatchy, um, especially at this time of year when it's dying, it feels like you just, do -do 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 -do, but it's actually milfoil, be aware of that one if you're not aware of it, milfoil's the red stem one, Real sparse, it's horrible stuff to fish among, really. Um, so, yeah, I think I've landed in as it's hit the spot in the wind, it's come down and maybe landed short. Um, so, yeah, basically, I think I mean, it would have been fishing, but not where I wanted it in the spot. So, tonight it's going to be extra, extra, extra care. So much so doo -doo -doo, that I'm only putting one noodle on it and one hinge. Um, the noodle's going to keep going, keep going, keep going, bang, because that one takes a foam, get it perfect, yes, and then I can keep chucking that hinge around it until I get that perfect drop, and that's it. I've absolutely, same mullered the bait on it, probably put 20 big spawns, just chops and holes and, and um, maize, and then, yeah, just on this one, there's a little bit, the spot's moving slightly to the right, so I feel like they're eating off the right-hand side, but it is a bit choddier there. It's definitely getting bigger, this short spot, and I've got a couple of liners on both these rods last night, even the short one, so just shows that they're coming through. Um, so, yeah, I'm going for a hingey on that one as well, just for that confidence again that it's fishing. I know I had a bite on the noodle. I know I've been catching them the last three bites have been on noodles. However, I'm doing it methodically. The crocodile! Oh, that was Zach. I always feel like you're rushing. Hey, look at this. Hey, it's gone in me hole in me short. Hey. <laughs> um, you always feel like you're, um, you're rushing as soon as that boat's gone past. And I kind of was then, because I weren't getting them dropped. Bang, bang, bang. I was like, what the f knew something was wrong. Clip was wrong, wasn't it? 
mop it slightly but it was enough to put me off uh, getting in the spot slight wind change is what it is right all done the boys are ordering a kebab I'm joining them last night a little bit of kebab crock job's a good one <laughs> it's been a sick session though it? it's been sick regardless Ooh. I've got to uh, say uh, I've got some uh, got a matey he gone next door now Scott his name is top sound lad real sound lad um, he's gone next door which is why I'm sort of looking over my shoulder uh, it's not that I'm doing anything wrong it's just that I'm obviously want him and it you don't want people to see the spots and that although you can probably see it from the swim <laughs> but uh, yeah it's just always one of them especially because I'm catching he doesn't know I'm catching but it's one of them in it I don't know spots are sacred uh, more sacred than fish captures you know what I mean people can know you're catching but if they know exactly where then different game in it so the sneakier you can keep them the better I think just for now but yeah got a night left it's been a long one probably I've got a couple more nights in me if I really want it but <laughs> now I've got loads to do loads to do so come on be kind be kind oh come on granddad do it for me we have a corpse it's not a crock though but we've got another bite it's on the hinge as well don't know what to do i've hit about hit about four or five shows out there one bang on it I don't know what to do in this situation. I know that other rod's fishing. <sighs> but I made a mistake last night. I'm not trying to put it back out, did I? But there's fish out there. <sighs> it's one of them. I have they all spooked off when I've had that bite? Do I get it out quick? <clears throat> I think so. Fish is in the net, chilling. Might just whip it back out quick, job. Is what it is. It's only early. Ish. I was at you awake anyway. Quarter past eleven, so yeah, there's another good window. We saw between twelve and two, so I think that's what I'm gonna do. Get the rod back out. Two rods fishing. It's gone nice and flat now, so should be able to get it out. Nice. Don't know what I'm gonna do with this fish. Probably a mid twenty. Quite a nice old prey one. Don't know if to get it out and risk trying to do some self takes or do a match shot and swipe it back. Decision confirmed, I've just hit another one. Bang on it, I can't, the fish are feeding there. I can't, I can't, um, I can't risk trying to do that rod. Here's what it is. If it's not fishing, I f***ed up earlier. I can't risk pushing the croc off the spot. I'm trying to squeeze an extra rod up. That might take me three forecasts, yeah. Decision made. The spot is bleeding. I can see the slick on the spot, it's madness. Come on the croc. It's a pretty one. This side's very pretty. Come on, don't make any noise, mate. Don't make any noise. Come on. Don't do it. Don't do it. Come on, I don't want to get a little shot of you. Oh, lovely. That's a nice fish. Red 20. Right, let's get him back. Right here, 
30 pound of that. Slipping about 30 pounders now, yeah. Bed. That scared me. Tench. Yeah, so basically, I sat here for about 20 minutes. And he had like five, five, six fish on the spot in the zone. I'm sat there and I'm thinking, just had a little wine on it, might not be fishing. You know what? It's half 12 now. I'm just thinking, damned if you do, damned if you don't. I sat there last night with that one rod out there after catching Patch, and I'm pretty sure she was probably out there and it didn't happen. So that went out one cat. I said to myself, if it flattens off and goes calm again, I'll chuck it because I can see the lead land. And I swear to God, it went pretty much slightly right than I would have wanted it, but it dropped in that hole, mate, and went bump in the soft stuff. It'd be fishing, it's a hinge, I've got an extra rig. Might have risked spooking them, but one lead. I don't think they're gonna go far, they've been munching. The slit coming off that spot, look at this, yeah. So I've got this camera here, on my phone. See if you can see this, see if I can do this. So, look at the... Hey, oh, buddy, what's doing, what's that doing? You see it? Yeah. See the, can you see the slick there? It's basically got like a night vision thing on my phone. Not night vision, but it brightens up. And it, buddy, was slicking. So they're eating there, they're returning. I just thought, I've seen these fish swimming around the kids in the beach. I've seen canoes over the top of them. I thought, surely one lead ain't going to hurt them. But only time will tell, at least, now I've put it out. At least I can sit here confident I've got two rigs out there if it didn't happen. You know, if it doesn't happen, then it doesn't happen. But I wouldn't wanna, I'd prefer this than wake up in the morning, the other rod ain't gone, and I'm thinking, I should've put that rod back out. Saying that, I'm probably gonna wake up. If I don't catch another one, I'll be like, I shouldn't have put that rod back out. <laughs> but we'll see. It's game on, that's for sure. That was a nice fish as well. It was a really nice fish, but I just didn't want to risk. And the thing is, is these lads on here, yeah, especially the lad who's next door to me, Scott, big up Scott if you're watching this, he's a well nice lad. It's not that I'm lying to him, I'm just withholding. And I know from the type of lad he is that he, well, hopefully, he'll understand once he sort of sees what's happened in this vlog. Catching a brother, catching Patch, you know what I mean? I've got some, you know, it's not about trying to, keep him from getting in here or anything it's just if it gets about here there and everywhere this place could get busy and he knows that and I wouldn't blame him if he'd caught him and done the same he might be catching and done the same there's um, yeah, him and another lad as well I won't mention any names anyway but yeah I don't like not telling people like I say I don't like lying to people it's not lying I'm not saying see these lads haven't bounced in the swim and gone oh you caught out da 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 it's like then you know, he's gone, oh, he had attention, and I just went, oh, I need to, you know, I just sort of avoided the chat. Um, you know, because obviously he knew it was up his next door, but he'll understand all for your life, I don't think, fair play, good angling. Um, not, you f***ing lying piece of you should have told me. Sorry, Scott. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I put that fish back, just because I didn't want to, there's other lads on as well. Don't want flashes going off, uh, what, what, like a, up a 20, maybe a 30 pound, I don't know. Didn't even really look at it, but it's got some nice shots of the scalings on it. Let's have a look. Here's a, I hope it doesn't turn out to be some mad original leany. <laughs> is what it is, isn't it? But so you can see that. Um, the scales on him. Whoa, big scaly starburst and everything. Sick. Right, I'm gonna go. Who's messaging me at half twelve? God knows. Right. Come on, the crocodile. See you later, alligator. In a while. I'm not gonna say it. Right, it is six o'clock now. I've been up since about four. Um. Oh, got up and literally. Within five minutes of waking up, I'd probably hear two or three, and I mean bang on the spot. Like, 
it was quite calm. I could see the tree that I'm casting out, and it was boom, big ring, boom, big ring. Like not booming out, but just swatting and leaving rings. It was definitely caught feeding on me. <sighs> Cat can't help but think there's something wrong. You know, although you shouldn't be getting bites all the time, and if the fish are on you, you should be picking them up, really. Don't think they're that riggy, if you like. Um, so they definitely came back after chucking that rod out, which turns out was definitely the right decision. But in my mind, I'm thinking the noodle should have gone. And it hasn't, so there's some up with that. And the hinge might not be fishing because it went down, but it could be somewhere else in the spot that's not bang, bang on. <laughs> you know, and I'm thinking the noodle might not be fishing because um, obviously they went out at half five, the fish didn't turn up till about ten, so there's a good four and a half hour window there with no fish in the area, which means crays are going to mull you because they would have been out there because I baited early as well, so the crays and that sort of so it's almost like, in hindsight now, I wish I would have probably, once once I was going to redo that rod, I wish I would have brought the other one in as well, and redone them both. It's just things that you pick up and sort of learn and think afterwards, isn't it? You know, just because they've been on the spot that long, but at the same time, the other rod had been on the spot for four and a half hours, and that was all right, so it's like, I don't know. Well, maybe I'm being a little bit over curious as to why the rods haven't gone but what the amount of fish that I've heard out there you'd have thought there was 200 fish in here um, yeah so much curly back and I'm gonna go I don't want wine in there but apart from that I haven't heard one for a while now we'll see see what the light brings yeah buzzing my four carp in the last three nights that's just like, for, 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 from from what I've seen and what I know, that that's good going. Like, you know, obviously, got it right there. But it took me sort of four nights to build up to it, didn't it? Well, I persevered. We're staying there next a few nights, weren't it? Sick. It's me last morning. It's Thursday today. I've got to go home. I've got to be out of this swim for two nights. So, I bet you can imagine what night I'm coming back. <laughs> I've got to. Good thing, because I don't think anyone's going to fish this spot. I've never seen anyone really sort of fish towards that area. Everyone aims out of this big bit or into this deeper water, and no one fishes that white sort of gap there. So, hopefully, I've got a bit of safety. No one knows I've caught anything. So, let's see. Well then, I don't know if you can see this. These are swimmers. Come out in the dark. So this is just sat here listening to fish show. Next minute, speedboats come out. I've had to wind them in. One quarter of wounds in. Lovely. Good night, mate. Hello. Hello, matey. Gutted. And I wonder why we ain't getting a bite. Craze cost lives. Well, it costs fish, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, mate. Sorry, mate. I'll, I'll get, I'll get you off now, mate. You can go backward. Well, yeah. Basically, I'm on my way home. It's a long session, I haven't done that long of a session since I was really young when I used to do week sessions on Dodder and I'm sure I have, um, but nothing that stands out like that, that was hard work, uh, I hope it sort of comes across, you know, that it is hard work, you know, not just dealing with the craze and the public and the size of the lake and the, you know, I know I keep repeating these things, but it's just like, in my head, I'm like, da -da -da -da, you know, I'm reading it, um, uh, and I'm trying to, try me best you just got to wait for everything to align look at that this morning you know I did everything I can I've got these fish coming to this spot they're returning I chuck that rig back out 
and wound in this morning, both rigs crayed. Um, you know, they've been sat out there with fish showing on me. In hindsight, the only thing I would have done different now is because I was chucking one rig, I may as well brought the other one in, refresh them both, get them out, bang, bang, two rigs fresh. But look at that, the one that I chucked out at what, half midnight or whatever, was crayed pretty quick by the looks of it because I didn't get a bite and wound in with a cray on it, so on the hinge. So, you know, just shows you, you just gotta wait for a slice and look. I know that big girl has been feeding on me. I don't have to see it to know. I know. Um, I don't have to see it to know. I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, what a session. Four caught um, in the last few nights. The first four nights were sort of, you know, moving around, working them out, getting bait in, getting spots in different areas. Um, and I'm telling you now, so, um, uh, mate from next door Scott top lads he was going to move in there after me just because he'd spotted a couple this morning when he come down for a brew fair play um, but turns out that they have to do the night uh, they, they do that night swimming again tonight and the paddle boards come out and they have a bit of a party and from past experience I'm sure I remember that happening uh, in the autumn once uh, it's around like Halloween because we're getting up there now it's about 27 28 now um, so Chances are no one's going to be in there tonight because you can't fish when the swimmers are out, you know, unless someone sits there and maybe waits till midnight or whatever until they stop and flick to mind the night, which you may well do, you might still move in there. Um, but yeah, it sounds like it could be free tonight, then it's Friday tomorrow, so chances are someone's going to drop in there. Um, but basically where I'm heading with this is I'm doing my two nights off out of that swim, which you have to do 72 in, 48 out. Um, and I'm going back. Of course I'm going back, you know. You might be thinking, sat there, thinking, how can he do that, you know, or what, you know. I'm sure you understand why, but I'm sure, I imagine a lot of people are like, bloody hell, you're doing some time, blah, blah, blah. I am putting a, pushing a lot to the side for this. I'm not just like, can just go fishing when I want. I've put so much stuff back, like think food, stuff and all that things are building up i'm gonna go home i'm gonna work my arse off for two days now um and then i am coming back fishing um, and i work from the bank like i have been doing that you wouldn't see that i do a lot of stuff from the bank um but you know it's it's that thing that i'm playing catch up keep saying it but i am playing catch up i had two three night sort of sessions booked in for pretty much every week leading from august Obviously, as soon as um, as soon as that plan went out the window when uh, Drake the Snake um, stitched me up, I pulled all that leave away, obviously, and stacked it all into October, November when I got my ticket back. Who wouldn't? So I've got a lot of time on my hands now. Hopefully, the next few weeks, if she doesn't come out or she doesn't get, you know, the worst happened to her with uh, what's swimming around in there in the nights at the minute. She's going in my album. I bloody hope so. Um, she's got to get caught, sure. She's eating. I'm watching her physically get bigger and bigger. Um, you know, she's definitely eating. She's definitely been on that spot. All I've got to do is hope she doesn't get caught by anyone else. So if she does, fair play. Um, but I'm working my hardest to try and catch this fish, and hopefully, this is going to be my time. See you Saturday. Thank you, lad. <laughs> Hello matey. I'm not going to give up until either someone catches it or I catch it or the lake shuts, well, shuts up. It's as simple as that. Trick or treat! <laughs> oh, I've got mega mouth beast in me this one, to be fair. I'm in crazy mode, basically. Um, messing around with a new rig. There we go. Lovely.